I'm a drama teacher. I should come out and do something dramatic. So, hello everyone, and thank you for giving me this time. I am just really excited to talk to you. And I'm going to start with something that wasn't planned because it just happened. And sometimes lately when things happen, I talk about them because they seem significant. So just before I was coming out to speak to you, all of a sudden I'm in the green room back there and I'm doing the thing, you know, trying to be centered and calm and breathe. And this is no lie. All of a sudden I closed my eyes and I opened them and this big spider was right there. <laughs> from the ceiling, like there's no other spider around, like sitting staring at me. And I just sort of looked at it and I really, I'm trying to like spiders because I'm trying to connect to the natural world as we all should be. <laughs> so I sat there and I thought, oh my God, like, look at this thing, excuse me, I didn't mean to say whatever, but anyway, so <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this thing and I immediately name, I, I made it a her because I have five sisters, so I made it a her. I called her Dorothea, and this is, this is true. So I went, hello, Dorothea, why are you staring at me? You know, and I just stared at her. It was <laughs> the most beautiful spider. And I thought, okay, I'll tell the audience about you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought more. I thought things happen for a reason. And I thought, okay. And then it made me think about talking to a stranger in the bank last, um, just last summer, and I was sitting there, and the woman in front of me, she was kind of cute, and she had sort of this cute little shirt on, she had this huge spider tattoo, and I don't have a tattoo, There's no, but I kind of like wondering why people choose tattoos, and I talk to strangers as if they're my brothers and sisters, it's a little habit I have, and I said to her, oh, you're a spider on your back, it's incredible, I'm kind of afraid of spiders, as I told you, but I didn't tell her that, and she said, um, I said, why did you choose that? And she said, because it's the mother of creativity. It's the, you know, the spider, the web, the incredible silk web. And I started to think about it. I didn't know that. Of course, I was sort of thinking I should go home and Google, you know, you know, what is the symbol of the spider. And I went, of course. So bringing this little part of my speech, which is really before I'm going to start, to closure, I thought, OK, what is my speech about? It's about, and what did Dorothea, I named her Dorothea, the spider want me to say to you, and that is, I'm an artist. I, I express myself, and creativity, working to share our own amazing, extraordinary miracle selves, which you all are, thank you, and I am, thank me. <laughs> it's time to share, like, to get us through this time of the crucible, is we need to be creative. And when I think about vulnerability, it's about when I express, when I come out here dancing for you, it's because I want you to feel. Because I feel as an artist. And so that's what Dorothea was telling me to say to you tonight, because that's a good message. <laughs> anyway. Hello, and I'm going to start, and I only have 12 minutes, so I better get going, but I don't want to rush. So I'm not going to try and do everything. I am going to breathe, and I am going to be centered, because we need to be centered. And I'm going to be vulnerable now, because I'm strong enough to be vulnerable. Okay, the crucible, fire, rage, ordeal, from the core of the earth into me. All of us, that's our family. We know it. I don't have to list it off. So what I did last year, the last five years, is I've been bombarded, as all of you have, with the literature, with the, the movies, with the debates, with the discussions. I went to Gwyndire, and I'm not, I, I read Climate Wars. I dove into the crucible. David Suzuki, I read Hopeful Things, The Geography of Hope. You know, I wondered about it, the world. Why are we being so unkind to our planet and therefore to us? <sighs> These little miracles, all of us. It just didn't make sense. So I dove headfirst, plunged into that world as all of us have. But I really plunged into it and there were four events that led to a pivotal event, which was the Haiti earthquake. Going to Gwindire, sitting here, I don't know if many of you went there, but I just, uh, it, it, it was very hard for me. I left and I felt very sad and by it. Um, 
uh, an unbelievable mind, but sad. And then I, um, I you know, watched, marched in the 350 march with the students at LVR. I teach up at LVR and, you know, and seen the faces and the vibrancy of those kids. And then I, I well, let's go to the, the earthquake. Then the earthquake. And I want to talk to you about that earthquake. Because, first of all, Owen and Nicole, I love them. And they, I worked at Mount Sentinel for 17 years, and I love my students, and I will not apologize for that. I love them. Like, I'd probably love all of you. And you could probably love me. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. Anyway, the fact that these students had gone to Haiti to help, and they were there just for such a short time, and then all of a sudden, this incredible shake of the earth. It's so profoundly shook in me because I was worried about them and I, I'm the neighbors to Don who took them down in the quest work that he does. It just somehow shook in me so profoundly and I was so reminded that we are the air we breathe, as David Suzuki says. We are the waters, you know? We are the veins, the, the rivers that flow are the rivers in us. So for me, when that earthquake shook, coupled with my education and my, as a teacher, reading everything and going to everything, all of a sudden, the day after the earthquake, and I am an incredibly creative person, but I'm grounded and I've taught for 23 years, all of a sudden, I couldn't do it anymore. And that's my red chair. I'm taking you to my living room. And I feel a little bit guilty because it's quite a nice chair. It's the only furniture I've ever built. And if anyone wants to sit in it, it's yours too. I went home and I sat in my red chair and I couldn't go back to work because I take my job seriously. I'm a teacher. And I stand up in front of kids teaching things that are vital, trying to inspire. And all of a sudden it felt like Complex compound sentences, which do have a place. Lots of things have a place, but somehow, if everything that was coming to my mind was true, then how could I continue on? There was this sense of urgency coming up in me that required me to stop and walk away. Even though people would talk, because we do that. We judge, but we gotta let go of it. I'm leaving. Bye. Sorry, students, I love you, but I can't teach you right now. So I sat down and I thought, and I wondered. And it was hard for my boys. And I thought, what, I can, what can I do? I know I'm just one person, but we're all knotted together. We're not like Dorothy's beautiful web. We got it all mixed up and we're grabbing it. So I said, okay, first of all, I can't do anything unless I'm balanced. If that earthquake shook in me like I am the earth, then I have to be balanced. And I can't teach until I'm more balanced. So I started to breathe. I made no apologies to anyone. I graciously accepted my place of humbleness and accepted love from my friends, from my community. When people said things like, oh, is she, like, why is she not at work? I said, I can't go there, I'm hurting. I'm feeling. I couldn't stay in the red chair, the refuge of my red chair forever, even though I did this, and that, and that. But finally I had to get up. For two months I stayed home. I said, no, I'm not going out there yet, until I know. So, what I did is I said, okay, the world, caring for the world, the environmental issue is a human issue, okay? So I can't separate it. I am the earth, you are the earth, whatever. So do I turn off the water when I brush my teeth? Yes. Do I recycle? Yes. Do I do this? Yes. All those things. Do I do them? Yes, yes. Could I do them more? Yes. I could do them more. I have to do that. But what else can I do? Me. I said, I have to be authentic to who I am. I am not going to invent the next way to harness solar power from outer Malukia. I'm not going to do it. It's not supposed to be. And my job, what I do, is no more important than what anyone else does. But I have to do what I truly feel I'm here to do. And what can I do? 
Well, I'm a storyteller. I can tell stories. I can love people easily. It's just easy for me to love because I, I don't know why. That's why I can be a teacher. I can, I've directed, I've filmed. I, I, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to use my art and I'm going to hold the intention of using art to deal with this issue straight on, to bring community together, all ages, to work through the craziness and chaos of creating together and say that the product is only as good as the process. And when it gets hard to go back to, okay, let's get through it. Let's stay vulnerable. Let's stay humble. Let's go. So what happened is there were, uh, I decided, okay, I'm going to get out of my chair and I'm going to do what I can do. I'm going to tell stories and I'm going to make a film. Three girls had come to my office in tears in the last two years saying, my God, the world, it's falling apart and no one's doing anything. It's urgent and we're not doing enough. What are we going to do? So what I did, because I can write, and I don't mean, oh, I can write, just so what? No role is any more important than anything else. Okay? I said, I'm going to take those three girls and I'm going to put them into a character. Her name's Carly Dutoff. And I'm going to make a story. Carly Dutoff is a girl, based on those three real girls who came, crying and saying, we've got to do more. So we're doing a film in town. And the main character is based on her. And what I've done is there are a number of kids working on it, a number of volunteers. And it's funny when you have intention and when you bring people together and you have a message that is about caring. Things happen like the web, like, like Dorothy's web. Things happen. People sort of arrive in your life and go, hi, I can do this. Okay, and I can do this and I'll help you do this. And all of a sudden, the community comes together. Now, I'm not saying that creating a movie is, you know, maybe it's bad in terms of carbon emissions. We're trying to do it in a very, very <laughs> environmentally way. But at least I can have hope. Do you know what I'm saying? So what I do or what you do, it is time now. To sit in this red chair, when I got up, I said, it's time. I know what I do, I have skills. It's not about bragging or saying they're bad. Just get busy and let's do it. All those little ways. Because we do have empathy. And I guess, coming to the very end, for teaching 23 years with youth, and really, I don't really pay much attention to age. We're sort of the same age. And I don't really consider myself 52. I'm 2, 17, 52, everything. We're all rolled into one. But what is my final thought? I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> My final thought is this. We all need to get busy not judging each other, doing what we can do, and it's now. Because if we do end up being so unkind to our Earth and to each other, we will have not reached our human potential. And it is enormous when we love. Thank you.